started in the beer industry, uh, I went to high school in Belgium. Okay. So my junior and senior high school, I was living over there. Six, just turned 16, 17, 18 years old. So I started drinking beer when I turned 16. Um, it's just kind of an enormous society over there. Got a real fond uh, appreciation for really good beer. Uh, came back to the U.S. when I turned 18 to go to college and couldn't drink anymore because my age 21. <laughs> and the beer that was out there, you know, by Coors Miller, appreciate so on and so forth, uh, just didn't go to the It's pretty funny this week. And do you just mainly di distribute to Montana, other than like the maybe Salt Lake that could we work out? Currently, I'm not distributed anywhere other than Montana. Just, just here. We have a distributor in Bozeman. Uh, Bronkins distributing. Okay. It covers Bozeman, Livingston, Gardner, West Yellowstone, Big Sky. Exactly yeah. that. I mean, outdoorsy. Um, generally, you know, if anybody lives in Montana and appreciates it, uh, they're of the right mindset yeah. to be in our market. Um, I guess technically it's you know 25 to 50, um, probably significantly male demographic. So as of now, everywhere you are is draft beer or draft. So by not having our beer in a can or a bottle, we're basically removing ourselves from 70% of our potential market. by barrels. A barrel is 31 U.S. gallons or two full-size kegs. A okay. full-size keg is a half barrel keg, 15.5 gallons. Uh, we have a production capacity of about 2,700 barrels a year. Uh, we're running at probably, we might do a thousand this year. In Montana, where the recycling program is non-existent, everything, bottles, six-pack carriers, case boxes, Crowns, labels, all that crap just ends up in a landfill, uh, which is completely against you know the kind of craft brewing ideology for the most part. We're generally trying to be you know very very good care of sponsors yeah. and guides and ski instructors and and make sure that those people um, and I think most of them will generally tell you that if, if someone asks for a, for a restaurant recommendation that doesn't want to go drop one hundred bucks on dinner at Rainbow Ranch, they send them here. You said you did like party for the guides, do you do anything? You said you did like party for the guides, do you do anything else to like be involved? We were involved in, in everything in the community. Uh, there is, nobody gets married in this town. Um, the, the, uh, the house parties, uh, yeah, trick or treating. There were four or five people that came to get cakes. They give the kids candy and parents beers. They were walking around. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> we are a very, very, very core part of this community. We've got a draft beer on tap. And these are all right, right, right beer, yeah. which is after it leaves the fermenter, we leave a bunch of yeast and hops. It's really gunky and crappy in there. Running into here, the beer is a lot more clear. Um, and then they're great. Like most of them, because this brewery looks really beautiful. I think we're the only brewery in Montana that uses English pale on the upfront. Um, our tanks are somewhat shiny because I work on them like, sometimes. Like that one's cool, and that one's not. <laughs> but a lot of breweries are in warehouses in the warehouse district of the town, and there's no fresh air, and you know, there's no, no mountains to look at. So it's been really nice working here just because it's, you know, aesthetically beautiful and a nice place to be. The economy was great when I was in school, but the first thing my teacher said was uh, people may not be paying their mortgage, but there's a six-pack of something in the fridge. <laughs>